Hey guys, it's Matt, and I'm back with my Lenovo K900. Uh, gonna do a deep dive into the device and give you a little bit more detailed information than some of the previous videos. So just to give you a reminder of what we're dealing with here, this is a Lenovo K900. It features a Intel Dual Core Atom Z2580 Clover Trail Plus processor. Uh, that's dual core with hyper threading and it's running at 2 gigahertz. Uh, also 2 gigs of RAM under the hood. Uh, on the graphics front we have the uh, PowerVR SGX 544MP2 GPU and uh, if you're keeping track of the, uh, Lenovo, or the uh, Intel SOCs that GPU should provide about 3x the performance of the previous, previous uh, Medfield SoC. Um, the Medfield, you saw it in phones like the uh, Orange San Diego or the Lava Zolo or also the Motorola Razer I uh, and a few others. So just to start out, we'll give a little tour of the device so you can get a good idea of how it looks. So as you can see in the front, pretty bare uh, black slate very square uh, you know sharp corners on the design which is kind of a departure from some of the other phones out there which is refreshing uh, much more square than you know Samsung's which are very rounded uh, you've got the Lenovo pretty large up top but uh, that's okay uh, you have three capacitive buttons on the bottom which light up. You have your home button, your back button, and then a menu key. So let's swing it around to the back. So this is a unibody design and it features this back right here is stainless steel and you can see it's got you know a brushed look to it which gives it a really nice premium look. It's got the Lenovo logo here, uh, Intel inside etched on there. Uh, this top part and bottom part are actually polycarbonate uh, and it's got a nice hard premium feel to it and it blends well with the uh, with the stainless steel. You'll also notice there's some screws here. Now these screws are just for show, they're not actually uh, real screws. So this back cover is non-removable so you can't cannot remove the battery inside. Um, so don't try to remove those screws. Now on the side you'll notice this device is super thin. Uh, it's 6.9 millimeters thick which uh, puts it in a class of its own basically. If you compare it to some of the other thin uh, well-known smartphones on the market uh, you have another phablet like this uh, the Galaxy Note 2 that comes in at 9.4 millimeters. Uh, you have the HTC One at 9.3 millimeters. Then you have the Samsung Galaxy S4, which is at 7.9 millimeters. And then, even thinner than that, you have the iPhone 5 at 7.6. Now this phone clocks in at 6.9 millimeters, so that's pretty uh, significant in how thick it is. Uh, on this side we have a power button, uh, there's also a SIM tray right here, it takes a micro SIM, uh, and it's a single SIM on this unit, uh, not a dual SIM as some of the uh, online rumors have suggested, although maybe they will have a dual SIM model in other countries, this is the Chinese model. Uh, on this side we have a volume rocker the top is empty and then finally on the bottom we have a micro, micro USB port 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a speaker or a microphone sorry hole right there now looking back again to the back we have a uh, speaker grill down here and the speaker gets pretty loud uh, so pretty happy with the quality of that of the speaker. Uh, up top you'll notice the camera array right here and this 
has some pretty unique features uh, that I'd like to mention. So the camera here, it's a 13 megapixel camera and it makes use of the new Sony Exmor uh, backside illuminated sensor. And uh, this sensor has the widest aperture of any camera phone out on the market at f1.8. So that is going to provide you with very good low light uh, photo taking performance. And so that's definitely a very nice plus. This camera sensor also coupled with uh, the Intel SoC can allow for some pretty cool photo taking features like uh, 10 frame per second still shooting. Uh, it can also do things like five uh, rapid frame uh, images and then you can do things like remove uh, photo bombs or other objects that jump in the front of the uh, camera while you're trying to get your perfect shot. Uh, now the, on the video front this camera right here can do 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Another thing I want to point out about the camera and just the general design of the phone is that everything is flush so it's there's no protrusion of the sense, camera sensor or the dual LED flash, I should also mention. So it's all perfectly flush, nothing sticks out, and that's kind of a, a nice welcome design to see. While we're talking about cameras, the uh, front camera here is a 2 megapixel shooter, and it's also got some unique features. It's got an 88 degree uh, viewing angle, which is the widest viewing angle of any smartphone available. And so what that gives you is when you're doing uh, video conferencing, say on Skype or Google Hangouts or any of your video conferencing apps, you'll get a much wider view of uh, in front of the you know the person you're calling will see. So that's a nice feature. Uh, we have the earpiece right here at the top as well. Now the elephant in the room of course is this massive 5.5 inch display and uh, the specs on this display it's a 1080p panel at 5.5 inches uh, that gives it over 400 ppi and it's very crisp and clear uh, and it gets very bright as well I had to turn the brightness way down to make it show up on this video uh, so, so far very impressed with the display. The phone also features uh, Gorilla Glass 2, so you uh, don't have to worry about scratching or anything like that. It's going to be pretty scratch resistant. Uh, now, I also briefly mentioned earlier the 2500 milliamp hour battery that's in this phone. And that's about average, I guess, that for a phone of this size but it is impressive to fit a battery that large in a phone this thin. Uh, one of the unique features about the battery is that it features a uh, 90 minute fast charging. Uh, you may be familiar some Lenovo laptops also have this kind of fast charging feature and so that can really help uh, get a quick charge or a boost uh, when you're near a charger. But uh, just a teaser I, have, I haven't found to need to charge it very often it gets uh, excellent battery life so far I've had the phone for about a little over a week now and I'm very impressed with the battery life so far uh, this model has 16 gigabytes of storage uh, I believe there's a 32 gigabyte model out there I don't, I'm not sure if it's available yet uh, and no micro SD expansion so all that store the amount of storage on the that's built in is what you're gonna get now on the software front this phone comes loaded with uh, Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean and so uh, let's see if I can zoom in here and you can I can show you the software version so go in here into system settings and you'll immediately notice that this phone uh, has some skinning courtesy of Lenovo so we'll jump in here to about phone 
and let's see if we can zoom in here and you can see this is a model K900 Android version 4.2.1 and some other specifics about the uh, device and so the phone came uh, loaded with quite a bit of bloatware I would say uh, lots of Chinese apps uh, there was some bloatware from Baidu and other Chinese uh, companies web companies and the beauty about that was that all of it was pretty much all of it was uh, uninstallable so I was able to just go through and uninstall it uh, this is not the uh, stock launcher the Lenovo launcher a lot of its in Chinese uh, and a lot of the widgets were just not really useful and I turned most of that stuff off so I'm not gonna go into too much detail on a lot on the Lenovo preloaded software uh, I'll show you some of the areas that have been skinned that you're not really gonna be able to change uh, as you can see here I I've, I've loaded my favorite launcher apex launcher uh, to get more of a vanilla Android uh, experience but here you can see in the notifi notification tray it's kind of a gray a gray look uh, non-transparent shade uh, you have import you know key toggles up here that you would use they also have you know additional toggles there if you if you click that button uh, you get the time and things like that up here uh, shortcut to settings and uh, so I can jump into one of these settings for example uh, if you hold down on one of these it'll jump right in and you can see uh, whatever devices you have paired uh, in Bluetooth but you can see the skin it's kind of a light a lighter themed skin uh, throughout the device let's go back into the system settings so it's a lighter themed device that, uh, skin it has these tabs up here for different types of settings that you want to jump to so common settings it looks like they're it's a tab based design they're trying to simplify things but I mean I usually just jump to the all settings that's what I'm more comfortable and used to so pretty much all of your standard uh, settings type options that you would expect uh, on a phone like this uh, you have the option to install from unknown sources which is a key for installing uh, side loading apps because this device it is running Android 4.2.1 but uh, it's not a Google certified device so you're not gonna have your Google Play Store you're not gonna be able to install uh, Google apps like Gmail and things like that uh, which is a kind of a downer out of the box but as soon as a, a root method is discovered you'll be able to sideload the market just like similar to how uh, people have done on the devices like the Kindle Fire uh, and so what I've done on this device is basically sideloaded most of my favorite apps and the way I did that is on my other phone I have a uh, my original Galaxy Note here uh, I went in there and I installed all the apps that I wanted I used a backup application uh, and when you do your backups they store the uh, APKs on, an, on the SD card and so what you can do is just uh, copy all those APKs to Dropbox for example and then I just go into Dropbox and I can install all those apps uh, right onto the device and so I've got a lot of my favorite apps uh, loaded on here and it's it's not it it's definitely inconvenient to not have Gmail but I was able to get some of the Google apps on here like uh, Google Voice I was able to get working and Google Maps and also uh, YouTube I was able to get working and so for Gmail I just use the mobile site for now uh, now 
I'm, a, I'm pretty active in the uh, forums trying to figure out a uh, root method and as soon as I figure out or someone smarter than me of course <laughs> with this area figures out how to root this device uh, I'll definitely share that information now a lot of the commenters uh, from some of my other videos have been asking how uh, responsive the device is, is it laggy and things like that and I mean as you can see it's very, it moves through the screens very very responsive, it doesn't miss a beat uh, down here so the UI is super fluid uh, let me jump in to here to a web page uh, here's the verge uh, and let's see if I can you can see the the pinch to zoom is pretty responsive um, moving around pretty responsive uh, let's zoom all the way out here and you can see you can see a lot of here let me see if I can angle this so you can actually see the text you can see a lot a lot of the web page and this text at this size with this 1080p display is actually very readable uh, it'll be hard to show on the camera but it's uh, it's legible even zoomed out that far and so that's you know that gives credit to that uh, 1080p resolution and uh, non pentel IPS display uh, let's open up another site here so we have uh, in gadget this is the the mobile site and you can see the scrolling speed uh, just very fluid responsive you can scroll fast you know it it's pretty uh, consistent with what you want it to do now the browser that's loaded on here it's a stock stock browser uh, slightly modified uh, very similar to some of the tablet browsers I've used the stock tablet browsers on Android I've used you can actually enable the side uh, menu which I, I kinda like to use you can uh, you know open new tabs straight from it switch tabs open the URL um, now the browser also features this full screen mode so you can see you can see the entire you can use the entire screen for browsing you can kind of toggle that on and off and brings the status bar and the bottom menu bar in and out uh, another really cool feature that I love about this browser is it has this uh, screen on option which lets you uh, keep the screen on at all times when the browser is open and this is a really convenient feature for if you're like me I like to read a lot of articles and web pages and things like that and I hate when the screen shuts off on me uh, while I'm reading and so whenever the browser is open with this feature it'll keep the screen on and uh, you don't have to worry about it Now, uh, I wanted to uh, address some of the questions that some commenters had about the device. Uh, uh, some of you were asking if the device gets hot, uh, especially since it has this metal back. And uh, at times in really heavy workloads, uh, it gets a little warm, like right around here. But typically, no, and it cools down really fast. Uh, I think uh, there's some serious power management inside here for... Uh, bringing the device you know really clocking down all the frequencies and the voltage uh, when the device is idle and that is definitely shown when uh, looking at the battery life um, the standby time has been pretty incredible uh, when I'm not using the device the battery percentage barely moves uh, it's hard to benchmark exactly uh, you know what the battery life is because this is my daily driver and you know in order to get you know solid reliable benchmark battery benchmark data you know I would it would take days and days of just not being able to use the device in a normal way uh, when I am using it in a normal way I easily get through the day I mean for example 
it's as you can see it's uh, let's focus here it's 10 30 p.m. here and you can see my battery meter is practically full uh, it's like three quarters to a half halfway full so if that gives you any idea I've never had any situation or issues so far where I was worrying about uh, the battery uh, another battery story is uh, I went camping this weekend and you know the phone was sitting in the car uh, on I didn't turn anything off I didn't put it into airplane mode or anything for a few days and the battery uh, barely moved so that was that I was impressed by that I was expecting it to be dead uh, a couple of other things uh, I was asked about graphics benchmarks uh, the the key graphics benchmark I've seen sites running is GL Bench and unfortunately I, unfortunately I can't get it loaded on here because uh, I don't have the Play Store and I wasn't able to sideload it so I'll keep working on that but um, in the meantime there is uh, there's a Need for Speed Most Wanted that's preloaded on here so I can just launch that and uh, there's an update I'll skip it for now and maybe I can give a little bit of a example of the gameplay Looks like I'm playing, so... So that's kind of an idea of the, uh, the graphics performance a little bit. Uh, hopefully I can show more... Uh, Get out of here. Jump back home. So uh, that's a little bit of an idea of the graphics performance. Uh, but hopefully, yeah, once I get the market on there, I can show um, GL Bench and we can get some more reliable uh, benchmarks. Uh, I had another question about the languages that are supported, and so this phone is from is uh, from China. This is the China release. So languages were very limited to just uh, English and Chinese so uh, maybe after the device gets rooted uh, and a custom ROM is installed uh, there'll be support for more languages uh, and finally my favorite question uh, from the comments was when am I going to do a drop test and uh, I'm not quite ready to do a drop test yet uh, but stay tuned you never know another kind of unique feature of this phone is uh, the screen actually works with gloves on so I'll throw on a glove real quick uh, so there I am glove on and as you can see I'm not really pressing hard and it's very responsive with the glove and even these bottom capacitive buttons are also usable with the glove and so that's a really cool feature if you're uh, in a warmer in a colder climate where uh, you would typically have gloves on so just another little cool feature similar uh, I believe the Galaxy S4 has the same feature and so it's on par with that on that feature 
Now, uh, since I didn't do much of a deep walkthrough of the stock software, uh, I figured at least I'll show the uh, camera UI. Uh, and there's a bunch of cool uh, little features in here. So you have your shutter here, of course. Here you can switch between uh, video and uh, still pictures. So this wand, this little magic wand here, lets you do all kinds of cool uh, effects. And so there's a bunch of different... Let's see if I can focus this here. There's a bunch of different effects that you can do, like uh, micro or obscure, um, fisheye. Uh, this uh, pencil feature is really cool. Uh, Let's, I don't know if it'll really show up well here, uh, but it kind of makes everything look like, uh, yeah, it's not going to show up well, but it makes everything look like a, kind of like it's a drawing. Uh, you have your flash control over here, auto on and off. Uh, you can switch around to the front facing camera and back other settings, lots of different setting options here, uh, common, advanced settings, and uh, other. So there's a lot of different uh, camera features and camera options uh, to play around with. So over here, there's additional shooting modes. So you have the burst mode, which I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, and panorama mode, you have night mode, we have an HDR mode, let's see, let's bring that menu back up, uh, let's swipe through here, auto dine, I'm not sure what that is, there's smile, macro, and a timer option. So that's a general walkthrough of the uh, camera UI. Uh, pretty good features and good options and uh, some cool little uh, things you can play around with and make your pictures you know, more interesting. So one other thing I wanted to uh, walk through is a, a quick video playback. Uh, so I'll I don't have anything loaded on here, but uh, I can just try to load something up on YouTube just so you can sort of see how the video playback looks. Let's see, what do we have? Uh, let's try that. Arrested development. I'm a gentleman honey farmer. The only thing I've got back there are my bees. Bees? No, bees. Bees? Bees. Bees! Oh, bees! So that's uh, just a quick video playback. You can see it fills up the screen pretty nice. Uh, it's hard to tell from the video, but it looks it looks really good. Uh, now I uh, I did a size comparison in my uh, unboxing video, but I figured I'd just uh, for the deep dive do a, another close look to compare. So this is my Galaxy Note GTN 7000 and you can see uh, that, let's get these next to each other exactly. So the Lenovo definitely is taller. Let's get right above it. The Lenovo is definitely taller and Let's take a look at the width. So you can see width wise that the note is a bit wider. Not too much wider, but definitely noticeably wider. And then finally, 
we can take a look at the thickness. There's the K900, and there's the note. It's a little hard to see because of the bulging back of the note. But let's see if we can get, if we put them flat down. So there they are, flat down. And if we can get a little closer here. And you can see pretty significant difference there. Here's one more view with them stacked on top of each other. And I can show them stacked the other way as well. Alright, so that's a wrap. That's pretty much uh, all the things I wanted to cover uh, on this deep dive of the Lenovo K900. So a final, you know, look or walk through, look around of the device. Uh, there it is. And uh, let me know in the comments if there's any other things you uh, want to know about it. Uh, I'll continue to try and get this thing rooted with the Play Store, loaded up, and uh, it should be a pretty awesome device. Thanks for watching.